Well guys, here we are. We are at the prolific, and I say prolific, we're at Barston today, for those that you recognise it. Now, why are we at Barston today? Now, we're at Barston today because we are out with the finished articles, the new Black Edition Pro Ultralight Rods. Now, I have been lucky enough to have the prototype for the last eight to nine months, the 10 foot version, and uh, fellow map consultant Michael Bookwald has had the 11 foot version. But we've come here today, there's a couple of reasons. One is I'm on a Silverfish final in a couple of weeks, and it gave me a chance to have another look at it. But the main reason was to come and use the new rods, the finished articles. Now, when we come to Barston, everyone expects it to be absolutely tremendous. This place is rammed with fish, but, and I'm gonna say a big but, because of the depth of water at Barston, it gets affected by the weather really quickly. Now, last week, I've been here fishing the Silvers League, um, Lee Jones' Silvers League, and Chris Hill's Feeder Only Silvers League. And we've had some, oh, there we go, perfect timing. We've had some fantastic days when it was really mild, but we've also had some days where it's been really, really difficult when it goes cold and simply because it's a shallow venue and it, as I said it gets affected by sudden change in temperatures. Now last week we had 14 degrees on one of the days, eight and nine degrees overnight. Now this time of year that can only mean one thing and that is it's going to pour down the rain. Now I drew the peg to my right, today I'm on peg 17 on the riverbank. Now last week, well to last two matches, I've drawn peg 18, the peg to my right. Now the first time I drew it, I've come second in the match with 30 pounds. Last week I drew it, I had 30 pounds again and came fifth in my section. <laughs> it fished absolutely fantastically, but, and I say a big but, it's because we had really mild temperatures leading up to to last Sunday but since then we've had three rock hard frosts and I know I say it and I blame Tony every time that every time we go and do a video or go out to do some product testing it's absolutely freezing and I'm gonna say it this morning was no exception we got here this morning in the car park it was foggy and it was still zero degrees when we walked down the bank this morning. It was a rock hard frost here, and this is the third night of the frost. And we decided to shoot the video because it's how Barston can be. It's been freezing cold for the last three nights. It's been rock hard frost here. And I have no doubt the water temperature has dropped dramatically. Well, I know, because as I've caught some fish today, you have to excuse the noise guys, we're obviously in the flight path from Birmingham Airport and the wind is howling in across at us. Now, we decided to shoot the video because it's been a really difficult day. It hasn't been normal bass and standards where you keep catching a fish and chuck. And we've decided this because we weren't gonna shoot the video because we'd really, really struggled. But this has been a typical bass and wind today, whereas I've had to do loads of different things to try and encourage the fish to feed. Yet yeah, I'm sitting on my own, there's nobody around here. And normally when you sit pleasure fishing at Barson, it's a fish a chuck, but that hasn't been the case today. Now later on in the session it has been, but for the first three hours, we've hardly had a bite. And I've had to do so many different things to encourage a bite, it's made it a really interesting day. So. We're gonna go through the things I've had to do. We'll run through the, the setups that I've used to hopefully give you an idea of maybe approaching, you obviously fish some venues around where you live that might be the same. Quite shallow, full of skimmers, full of carp, but when it has lots of rain and then it goes cold, it can really affect the fishing. So that's what I've done today, guys. Starting to catch a few fish now, but I'm just gonna run you through what I've done, how I've fed, and obviously the tackle I'm using, and hopefully 
that helps you catch a few fish when you go to venues similar to Barston, you're in your area. Now, as I said, I've been fishing at Barston for the last few months on, on two Silvers Leagues, and we always catch a few short. You can catch them at 13, 14 metres, but today I've just fished two feeder rods. I said we're out with the Black Edition Pro Ultralights today. Now, I've had two lines. I've got one set up and clipped up at 27 metres, and this is the line I started on. However, because we catch them short at 13 and 14 metres, I've given it five bait up feeders at 14 metres on this short line. That's just standard, put a bit of bait in. Now, I didn't put anything in with it, just pure ground bait, because if you watched my last video at Midlands, it was a case of once you put it in, you can't take it out. As I said, the weather's changed dramatically in the last few days. It's gone really cold. Have I mentioned it's cold? Yeah, <laughs> um, it's gone really cold. Water feels really, really cold today. So I've just put some ground bait in because they're used to getting fed on this line with a pole line. So I've put some ground bait in at 14 meters. Now a kickstart, this peg, I've just actually started fishing on this 27 meter line. I've got a 30 gram medium window feeder on there. And this is a simple setup. I'm just gonna hook this up guys so I can show you the setup. Now this is really simple. Now I've got a length of O. 21 optimum power which goes onto the reel because this has got 012 braid on it now this is slightly different to my other rig because this has got a slightly longer twizzled boom quick change adapter one of dean barlow's lovely fantastic feeder links thank you dean two number eight dots and a piece of one millimeter pole silicon over the top to protect them stots it gives me a nice nice smooth at boom to kick off and if i just undo that guys you'll see with the two stops on how far that kicks off look if i just leave that in the wind you can see that kicks off nicely and i've got a slightly longer boom so that hangs just below the feeder on my shorter line it's slightly different but i'll talk you through that soon but a slightly longer twizzle boom probably six inches so that when that hangs down and as you can see if i can get that to stay still that kicks off from the feeder, as you can see. So, less tangles. Started on a 50 centimetre hook length, size 16 SFLB, and I've hooked my coat. Luckily it's barbless. And I've fished a treble pinky to start off with. Just a, three or four pinkies in the feeder at the start. Well, probably a bit more, probably about 10 pinkies first chuck. Treble pinky on the feeder, and just grab, plugged it with ground bait, and I've started like that. Now. As always, you always get an immediate hit at Barston on that long line, but it's whether you keep them coming. I've got to pick this up, guys, because my other rod's wrapping, because that's out at the same time. <laughs> True camera style, that as you're trying to do something else, your tip goes round. Right, so yeah, so that's what I did. I started on that line out there at 27 metres, 50 centimetre hook length, I've had four skimmers in four chucks straight away, which I expected because every league match I've fished down here, you get a run, a run straight away. And I'll be honest, I think it's because, because of all the noise, the skimmers move out at, at first, they move out from the bank. And that's why you, you get an instant run at 25, 27 metres. So going back to this, 012 braid, 50, 50 centimetre hook length, six inch twizzle boon as i said 30 gram window feeder just started fishing on this line after i'd fed five bait at folders on the 14 and a half meters that's been okay but and this is the reason why we did the video today the normal what everybody expects at barston go out and get a fisher chuck it hasn't been like today and i've had to work really really hard now if i would have just keep chucking the same type of feeder down the same hole on the same hook length I wouldn't have caught any fish I would have caught a few and then I just cannot get a bite but by chopping and changing I've moved today from feeder different feeders to different size hook lengths 
different size hooks and that's caught me fish. So after two hours, I've come onto this short line. Now I expect this to go around. There's no one else on the lake. I'm here on my own, but it just didn't happen. I've come onto this short line. I've caught two skimmers straight away and then I couldn't get a bite. So in my armory here, I've got some taped up feeders. I've got some two hold cage feeders. I've got some small window feeders. I've got some maggot feeders. And it's been one of them days. Whatever I did, whatever I changed, I'd get a bite. But I couldn't get a consistent run of fish all the time. And so, by chopping and changing my feeders and changing my hook lengths, the same as what I did on that long line, I've managed to keep fish coming all day. I'm just going to run you through now my short line setup. As I've said earlier, this is one of the new Black Edition Pro Ultralights, super soft, and I say this is super soft. I've been lucky enough, as I said earlier, to have the prototype for the last eight to nine months, and I am honestly, hand on heart, I've never used a skimmer rod like it. It is absolutely tremendous. I've used it at Tamar, fishing for silvers, as in roach, catching two, 250 roach. I've never used a rod like it, and I'm not just saying that. Those that you know me, you know I'm an honest sort of guy, and this is special. So if you get a chance to have a look at one of these rods or you're thinking about buying a rod for your silverfish fishing, these are phenomenal. Right, okay. So 10 foot black edition Parabolics Pro Ultralight is what I'm using. I've got on there. Now, I'm going to say I've got a two old 15 gram cage feeder. That's what I'm using at the moment. That hasn't, I haven't used that all day. I, was, I couldn't get away with that. At the moment, I've got a six inch hook length on there because it's late on the day and I'm catching the fish close. Now that's because they are now attacking my feeder, but earlier on the day, they wasn't. I've gone from fishing a 60 centimeter hook length to a 40 centimeter hook length. Then I think, oh, the fish are in my peg. I've dropped to a six inch hook length. I've caught one or two, can't get a bite back to a 40 centimetre hook length, caught one or two, can't get a bite, gone back to a six inch hook length, not had a bite, gone back to a 60 centimetre hook length with a solid window feeder full of maggots, had one or two, then I couldn't get a bite, it's been one of those days. What I'm trying to get across to you guys is that this is no different to fishing the pole, you have to have in your army, uh, let me put my teeth in again, in your armoury, you have to chop and change on the feeder just as much as you would on the pole. Now, when I come and fish the Silver's Leagues here on the pole, I have three different rigs for the same line, strung out, bulked down, heavy rig that's not going to move. And it's exactly the same on the feeder. You have to make changes. And I'll say that on the last few videos, the fish will tell you how they want it when they're confident in feeding. Now, as I said, the only way I could get a bite early was a 50 or 60 centimetre hook length with a single maggot on a size 18. It's later in the day now, I'm fishing a 6 inch hook length with a two hole feeder with a single maggot and I'm getting a bite of chuck. But it hasn't been like that all day. So what I'm trying to say to you is, you need to chop and change to keep these fish coming. Now, let's have a quick look at this rig. On the last setup, I had a six inch drizzled boom, but I was casting a long way. Now this is, this rig here is designed so that when them fish are attacking the feeder, I can get that hook close to that feeder. Very much like a method feeder. Now, I hope you can see this guys. Four inch drizzled boom, or maybe even less, three inch drizzled boom. Quick change adapter one rubber stopper, I've got a length of 021 optimum power and a six inch hook length on there. Now, this rig is designed so when the fish are attacking your feeder, you get really, really quick bites. Fishing a 40, 50 centimeter hook length, you'll get bites, but you won't get them as quick as this. This is a rig I changed to when them fish are attacking my feeder. Now looking at my tip, now these tips are super fine. 
In fact, the 11 foot version and the 10 foot version both come with the Polish style tips. Ones with a super soft, I would say it's probably six inches of super soft glass fibre tip to make your bite detection even easier on them very hard days. Now I believe that we've got some video of this, the tips as I've shown Tony earlier. But this setup now is for catching fish when I feel that these fish are attacking my feeder. Now when you're getting lots and lots of bites and loads of indications and you're fishing a long hook length, you're missing the bite. It's as simple as that. So this is the time to change to a very short hook length, small boom, and that's why I've got this set up on a 10 footer, nice short line, over, over which would be a pole line, and that's the setup I use for that. When I feel like they're attacking me feeder, very short hook length, small hook, single bait, and let them take that like they're attacking your feeder. Simple as that. Braid or mono? Well, <laughs> braid or mono, that famous question. Right guys, this is my take on braid or mono. Up to 18 meters, always mono. That's my opinion, now that's don't start shooting me down. I always prefer mono that short. Everybody's got their own opinion. I prefer to fish mono, especially on this rig I've just shown you where I'm fishing a very short hook length. Now, fishing mono, very short hook length. You've got to remember this is no different. When I feel like the fish are attacking my feeder like I've just said, my hook length is so close to my feeder. On a method feeder, they pick it up, they suck a bait in. You normally fish with a bigger fish on a method feeder. And normally, they'll pick that bait up, they'll feel the weight of the method feeder, the hook going to the bottom lip, off they'll go. But when you're fishing this close, so, I mean, sometimes I fish 10 metres on this line. At Albans and places like that, you can get away with fishing 10 metres on the feeder. With a short hook length, the only resistance, because you're fishing a running rig, let me put my teeth in, because you're fishing a running rig, the only resistance they're going to feel, it's not a bolt rig, is your tip. Now they're going to, if they're attacking the feeder, they'll suck that single maggot in and they'll just carry on feeding and the, the bites will be really aggressive. Now unless you're an experienced angler and quite happy just to pick your rod up with fishing braid, I always find that the bites are so aggressive on that short feeder line, and it's the same at Tamar and Albans, and here, the bites are so aggressive when you're fishing a short hook length, mono gives that, that, that extra little bit of security. One is, you need to be fishing mono when you're fishing really short. That's my opinion, fishing mono, and make sure you're fishing very soft rods, because the bites can be really, really aggressive. So that's my answer to the mono and braid. I'm fishing braid on that 27 meter line, Again, fishing an ultra soft rod with a length of mono because the mono, I'm not going to say that word, elasticity in mono will give you a little bit of a, here we go, and that bite, that bite and then even though it's only a small skimmer, it almost pulled the rod in, like a, like a bite on the method feeder. But the only resistance again is my tip. And these fish aren't very big, they're six seven ounces some of them some of them a little bit bigger but i'll show you i'll show you this once i get it in that almost pulled the rod in that bite look at the size of this skimmer it almost pulled the rod in if i can hold him up because my hands are quite cold did i mention it was cold look at the size of that fish and that almost pulled the rod in on the bite because as you can see my feeder's there look how close that is to my feeder as that picks that bait up it's going to bolt straight away Just unhook that, put that in the net. Now, today, I've got everything with me. Uh, you name it, you come to Barson, I've got pinkies, I've got fluoro maggots, I've got red maggots, I've got red worms, I've got dendrobinas, I've got it all. However, as I say it again, it's down to us anglers to work out what the fish want on the day. 
Now what's happened today on this short line, when I came on this short line after two hours, I caught a few, as I said, but what's really kickstart my peg in the last, oh I'd say, the last hour, an hour and a half, is I changed to a maggot feeder. And where I wasn't getting many bites, I was getting an odd bite, but what I'm trying to do, cool, that was, that's how quickly the bite can be on that short hook length. What I'm trying to do is get, <laughs> get myself into a position where I've got the fish feeding hard on the bottom so I can get to fishing a short hook length because once you start catching fish on this short hook length, it is so fast, it's much easier to do a bigger weight. So what I try to do every session is try and get these fish into a position where I can catch them on that short hook length. So today I was getting odd fish and I couldn't get them lined up on this short hook length. So I changed to a maggot feeder and put on a 40 centimetre hook length. Now I caught three fish straight away, and I thought which is great, and then it slowed down again. And then I started getting indications on my tip, but I wasn't getting a bite. So that was sort of telling me that the fish were around my feeder attacking, trying to get to the maggots. Well, that's, that's, that's what I felt they were telling me. Now you've just seen how quickly, I've just cast that out, and you see how quickly I got a bite then. That is the beauty of a short hook length. Because when they're attacking your feeder, that's how quickly you can get bites. And again, that almost pulled the rod in. And, and, and again, look at the size of this skimmer, look. I'm going to hold it up for you. Almost pulled the rod in. Oh, looks come out with my finger, ouch. But, there we go again. Look at the size of this skimmer. If I can hold it up, there we go. Look, another little one. Almost pulled the rod in, but that's because my setup is right. If you get your setup right, it's very difficult to miss a bite because they're just now attacking the feeder. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, starting on a, put a maggot feeder on because I couldn't line up these fish. I had three and three chucks with a 40 centimetre or 40 or 50 centimetre hook, and I can't quite remember to be honest, guys. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> um, and then I had three fish quite quickly, gone on to the, oh, still on the maggot feeder, indications, couldn't get a proper bite. And I thought to myself, I'm getting slight little indications, but no proper bite. So I thought maybe. I could then go on to a six inch hook length with the maggot feeder, which I did. And then I caught like five fish in five chucks really quickly. But I, I felt there was that many fish in my peg that I couldn't put enough maggots in to keep the fish there. So what I've done then is I've come back in and changed to a two hole cage feeder like the one I've got on now, and it has just been lift off. You know, it's been instant bites, you know, it, I, what I like to think is I want to get these fish into a position whereas I don't have to put the rod down. Because when you can catch them that quick, that's when you can do your biggest weight and catch, well, put more fish in your net virtually. But it isn't always that simple. And today, Barston's been typical Barston. Oh. Well, I missed, that's my own fault for saying that you never miss a bolt on that short hook length. Oh look, that's a little bit tangled there, that's probably why. But getting this set up right, guys, is really important. Small twizzle boon. Make sure that your, your boon that you're using is quite thick. And there's another reason why I like to use like 021, is because it's slightly heavier than my main line. That length of line is going to be laying on the bottom because it's heavier. So the thicker bit of line will lay on the bottom. Even at that distance there, we think your line's tight, but it's not really. You know, as I said before, the elasticity, let me put my teeth in, in mono, you'd be surprised how far mono can stretch. 
if you want to try that at home guys pick up a piece of 017 mono wrap it around your fingers and see how much it moves and that's only a piece that big it'll probably move six inches that's how much it stretches i know we like pre-stretched mono for fishing the fit but it does still stretch you know we we all know when you if you chuck mono a long way you get a bite and you can hardly feel the fish all you just feel is the weight you can't feel the fish with mono because that is just stretching as you try to pull if you fish distance that's why we all fish braid when we fish long now because you're in contact with the fish straight away now anything past 18 meters i normally fish braid but anything shorter than 18 meters i would say fish mono so i hope that answers any questions about braid or mono that people might have Another little thing I want to touch on today, guys, is worms. I mean, as I've always said on every video I've ever done, I've always take worms. But today has been one of them days where I'm not quite sure whether the worms has actually done me any favours. I mean, this has got a lot of colour in it. But I fed some worms on that longer line earlier. Didn't make any difference at all. In fact, I didn't have another fish on that line after I'd fed them. When I first went on this line earlier, I put some worms in. As I said, my first initial feed had nothing in it, just pure ground bait, because I didn't want to put stuff in that I couldn't take out. And normally, as a rule, with a little bit of colour in venues, you put some worms in, it draws the fish in, they can smell it through the water and they come into it. But this cold water, there's been lots of times this winter where worms have been the kiss of death, not just at Barston, Medlands has been the same. I've had a couple of times at Auburn's where I put worms in and, it, and it's killed the peg. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it does. And today, it definitely hasn't made any significant difference. Now, whether that the fact there's some worms in my peg has made it a little bit better later on, I'm not sure. There we go. Another skimmer. The spikes are just incredible. These rods are so soft. They're just such a dream to use. I'm, I'm, they're just fantastic. In fact, my, <laughs> while I got the first prototype for Mark Robinson, he went down to Auburn's, did a bit of filming down there. After three fish, I made Tony ring, <laughs> ring up Mike and say, Westy says, you need to get him another one of them prototypes. But unfortunately, we only had one of each. So I've been using that. Thankfully now, the rods are going to be in production and they'll be with everybody soon. If you're a parabolics lover, make sure you check these out. But yeah, so getting back to what I was saying about worms, because I was rudely interrupted by that fish. Oh, God, let me wipe my hands. I've got bream slime on my fingers guys look just be careful with worms this time of year that's all i'm saying you've got to put them in now and again but you know i've put them in today as a test to see whether they're going to make any difference sometimes they make a massive difference sometimes they they don't make any difference at all i've been sometimes where i feel like i need to put worms in and put them in and it's killed me peg where i might be getting a few odd bites I thought well, maybe I'll put some worms in, put some in, the bite stopped completely. And then I've had to unclip and find another line. And that's what it's all about. As anglers, whether you're fishing the feeder, whether you're fishing the pole, you need to be permanently active to get the best out of your peg. Just sitting there and, and waiting for one thing to happen. Yeah, sometimes it works, but nine times out of 10, oh, Oh, I nearly, I don't know about having a bite there, I nearly hooked a duck. <laughs> this has definitely been the best way in the end. Short hook length, smaller feeder. Now at the start of your session, you might want to use a three hold cage or you might want to use a four hold cage. It's up to us to judge and just, just see what the fish are doing. They'll tell you how they want 
it on the day. They, they'll tell you, and it's up to us as anglers, and I'll say it again, it's up to us as anglers to make decisions. However much, many videos we watch, and you know, there's some fantastic videos on YouTube, not just by us, by other anglers, you know, it, it, there's some fantastic, and, and I try to keep my videos as plain and simple as I can be, so everybody can understand them, keep them raw, keep them simple, keep them honest. And I think what I'm trying to get you across to you guys, whatever videos I do, is just try and keep things as simple as possible, but be active. Don't just sit there and wait for it to happen. Because, as I've said previously, the slightest little thing, slightest little tweak you do to your rig, or even just to change the length of your hook length, you know, oh, this, I think there's some, there might be a carp there, Tony, because I've just had another proper liner there. It has gone a little bit quiet. The bites have been a bit funny, and I've had a proper liner then. But I'm going to maintain, I'm going to hopefully, to be honest, guys, I don't know if I said bloody freezing oh I'm allowed to say that Tony I'll get away with that right okay it's been beep freezing and um, look what I will say is we arrange to do these videos we see our venues are fishing we look at what products we've got to talk about and I like talking about fishing and coming fishing and talking about and showing people other anglers giving some tips about what I'm doing. But when we book these days to come and do videos, we, we book the day, we don't know what the weather's gonna be like. You know, the last few videos we've done, and I'm gonna to blame Tony, it's been absolutely freezing. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of a punchline and it is a funny thing. And when we did the original video at Auburn's Lakes, I kept saying to Tony, it's really cold, it's freezing. And the funny thing was, I kept saying to Tony, don't, don't cut that out of the video. We'll just keep saying how cold it is. And we did that and it's become quite funny. People that follow me on, on Facebook, the first thing they say, was it cold, Westy? Because it's, it's been quite funny. And we did it for a little bit of fun in the first place. But since we've said it, every video we've done has been absolutely freezing. It was really cold this morning. And I think that affected the fishing at the start of the day. It's got a lot warmer this afternoon. To be fair, guys, you might see some footage earlier, but I had to go back to the van and change some of the, the water, winter clothing I had because it wasn't warm enough. First of all, it was this wind has been so cold, sort of cut us in half. So, but as I said, we don't change the days we set these days we contact the fishery owners and say can we go and do some filming and whatsoever and so we turn up on the day regardless of the weather and we just have to do the best we can and yeah it would be great to sit there and catch 100 pound of skimmers 100 pound of bream today but that hasn't been the case and after three hours it looking like we we weren't going to catch enough fish to put a video together but that was the reason why we shot the video today, is to show you that if you persevere and get your timings right, you can catch some fish. Now it's not been tremendous like Barston can be, but the last two hours have been great. We caught some skimmers, we've had a few F1s on this short line. It's gave me a chance to fish these rods. Oh, how is that not on? I can't believe there's got to be a carp in me peg. That was like ridiculous, right? So, so that's that's the purpose of today, guys. We can have a little bit of a chat about some of the new gear we've got coming out. Caught some fish. I can give you a few tips that might help you on venues that are similar to Barston. There's some fish in me peg now. I think there's a carp there. I'm getting silly bites. It's not. It, it's you know. Whereas before. As I said, normally when the fish are attacking that feeder, you don't miss a bite. Or it might just be roach. And I think this is a roach. No, it's not. That's a skimmer. <laughs> but these rods are so soft. 
Yeah, look at that. I'm not going to swing him in. Guys, that's me for the rest of the day. We'll do a catch shot, hopefully we'll... But that's me for the day. Last of all, I'd like to say thanks to everybody that comments on the videos and watches the videos. You know, without you guys watching, it's no point us doing them. So don't forget to check out the Map YouTube. You, let me put my teeth in. The Map YouTube channel. Subscribe to that so you don't miss any videos that we do. Not just by me, by the rest of the consultants at Map. Take care, guys, and I'll see you on the bank sometime. Bye for now.